some notes in this song so when you play you wouldn't be distracted by any unnecessary movements here 
mostly um, it happens in the very first page and second page and the last page. <laughs> Um, just make sure guys, I don't really have time because it's gonna be not a huge video. I don't really have time to show you guys every bar, uh, but just make sure that when you try to write down the fingering in the score, for your right hand you choose the, the fingers that will allow you to take the one of the notes in the left hand. Uh, mostly it's the fifth note, <laughs> fifth or four, five, sixth note. Uh, just give you an example. For example, um, here. you see, I can take this note with the right hand, and this B I can take again with the right hand. This G I can take with the right hand, and also that will let your left hand not to change position many, many times, but just to use these fingers, five, five, two, one. One, two, five. And it's usually almost in every, in every bar you can do this work. It really helps, it, 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 it really helps, because when you play, play, play then you have to cross your hand so so many movements that really distract you from expressing yourself through playing. Um, and over here, before the middle part, maybe you have probably already noticed from what I played just now. So I'm using five, one, one, five, one, one. make this wave in the beginning uh, but what I really want to show you is over here when this culmination part comes and you're playing this part instead of flying over the whole keyboard with this with this big leap you may let go of this chord in the right hand and just help with your left hand so basically what I'm doing here, like this, and then like that. I hope you can see that. So it's one, two, one, three, and then I come back. But please make sure that you make correct wrist and elbow movements, so this movement wouldn't be again jerky, you know. So my elbow in the right hand would go to the left. So that's why I also rearrange some notes over here. I'm taking this D and F with my left hand. I know it's written all in the right hand basically. <laughs> like that, but what I'm doing. D F with my left hand and again right hand. Then 
watch this. <laughs> second finger in the left hand, second finger in the right hand. Then I continue with my left hand. And then I'm playing this octave, which is super important here. Um, not like that, because that's not enough. <laughs> I'm playing it with both hands, with my thumb. And again, guys, make sure you move your elbow. So I'm moving elbow here to the left, to the position, and left hand to the left. Then over here, left hand. Okay, this is my right hand already to the left. Elbow left, and then both elbows to the right. Um, now we simply start arranging music in our head within timbres that will suit to this music. And of course with my left hand I would choose a string group of instruments and I would use cellos and violins uh, according to the octave. So that would be like cellos and that would be high chairs, it's up to you guys. Um, in the middle part, this one would play, would sound in my head with beautiful timbre of violins, of course. <laughs> this one is it, as well, violins. Over here. And of course, for melody, I would choose absolutely perfect sounded vocal voice that would just float all around the in the air, you know. <laughs> um, and in the beginning, that would be of course soprano. Now, actually, when it comes to two notes, I actually would imagine two voices, you know, like two angel, two angels singing, you know. Over here, let me remember. <laughs> um, I think I would use maybe even actually three voices here yeah now in the middle part that would be cellos and that would be of course vocal voice again and like a male voice <laughs> tenor for example then again soprano A soprano or again like male two voices <laughs> on this part I will separate the middle uh, intervals I would play with violins I would play yeah basically I would play I would imagine in violins and then this octave Again, two voices. Then this part, the octave itself. Again, the voice and the um, feeling. Um, I would imagine in strings. Over here, two beautiful voices floating above the earth. And then continue, continue, continue the same, the same, the same. Um, 
Yeah, and actually over here, I would also mention voices. Three voices. And as we're going down, of course, I would choose the um, timber. And here we go, like cellos. And the voice again. Now, as you know, we uh, imagine every note in timbre to activate our fingertips to make them be tenacious and smart. And uh, also, we're gonna move our wrist according to the um, melody pattern to make our wrist be flexible and natural because it's gonna repeat the natural pattern of the melody. Uh, so, also make sure that you imagine glissando between notes. Especially in your right hand. <laughs> okay, my was <word's> getting weak. <laughs> um, over here also. So every note we connection with glissanda is you would probably know if you know piano whole system. So um, make sure that you move your wrist the same way, uh, especially in the right hand here. So, if the note is right, if the note higher than previous note is going to be to the right, if it's lower than previous note is going to be to the left. This is how we find the movement. So that would be right, left, left. to embrace the whole phrasing in the, in the melody. And left hand, of course, the main principle for left hand in the accompaniment. Bridge to the left, right, 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 left, 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 left. Yeah, I like that. Um, over here, very helpful if you don't play just with your stiff wrist, but you slightly move it according to the to the movement of notes. So that would be right, left. This kind of movements. Again, guys, as you could see, when I was playing, you could you couldn't say I moved my wrist, but inside my muscles, remember that movement. Now, again, guys, if you don't want to be distracted by any jerky movements that may happen when you make these big leaps in your accompaniment or some leaps in the right hand, then make sure you choose the right notes and you know these notes exactly. <laughs> I myself just circle it in the score. Where you're gonna move your elbow to, to change the position, to prepare a new position. And um, let me just show you some parts, which I think the most important one. Again, the rest you may hopefully find yourself. Over here, when I move my wrist to the left, I'm moving my elbow to the right. Just, again, to want to remind you guys, always will remind you that please don't replace movements of wrist with movement of elbow, because otherwise your wrist wouldn't stop working. So. Make sure that first you move your wrist, then you move your elbow. Again, when you do it, when you kind of learn it and have already habit to do this, you don't really think about that. But in the very first test, you really need to 
uh, to control that. So, wrist to the left and elbow to the right. Elbow right, elbow left. Elbow left, elbow right. Right, left, left. So basically every time you want to do something like this, Elbow to the right, elbow to the left. Oh, for example, here. The principle is the same. In the right hand here, if you're using fingers on the top three, four, three, four, five, five, you would like to move elbow on four here to the right and on four here. So in the so then what, when you play you don't think about any even small way and the same here I will move my elbow here and back right right yeah. especially when you play Because I'm taking this D with my right hand, I'm basically playing the chord four notes chord. So from four to five, I would move my elbow left. So all this stuff. Um, for example, here this is lame. Might be a little bit uncomfortable for you, but yet enough to distract you from music. So. You move your while moving your wrist to the left, you move your elbow to the right. And then back to the left. To the left. Left. Yeah, and even here, right. I mean, everything would be very comfortable and smoothly when you play. Right, left, right, left, right, left. So the same principle everywhere. Right, left. Um, and I'll go, yeah, so even here. Together with your wrist to the right and then to the left. Oh no, I mean, if we're playing this and then, like I told you before, you come back here and then to the right. So, at the very end, also, you have this beautiful melody here. So, you move, if you use fingers. On the top, two, three, four, two, three, five. I'm taking E with my right hand. Five, two. Then you would use your elbow here. Over here. try to emphasize this melody in the left hand. So A would go to the right. I don't know, maybe it's not really necessary and you still can play A to the left. But I basically play like this. Wrist to the right and elbow to the right. Wrist to the right. 
right elbow to the left. Right, left, right, left, and left, left. Left, and the rest like I showed you before. But who knows the score, you will probably understand what I'm doing, so you can just apply that. <laughs> okay, so that would be position change. In the next step, as usually, we're gonna play it. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna show you guys how I basically play it in the very first step when I imagine every note in my head and um, I imagine it was correct movement with glissando between notes, I make sure that I able to imagine all, all the notes in the chord or interval texture here, like both notes or four notes would clearly sound in my head to simply control all the fingers. And then I just play it without any intonation and weight, just without any nuances just watching my wrist and elbow movement. So in the very first step that would look like that. With intonation and weight, um, make sure that you really intonate every articulation in the right hand. Every tenuta, every accent, enrich your intonation and enrich character of music so much here, if you do it correctly. <laughs> if you don't do it correctly, that it will just bring um, so much more confusion to you. <laughs> so, if I would sing this tenuta, <clears throat> Where should I sing it? Okay, let's sing it low. it out loud because I already know how to play but just to show you guys but actually when I sing it in in my head it's much easier so when I play it it would bring certain way of intonation Now, when it comes here, please don't play tenuta anymore. Now it's 
accent and that brings so much passion here even though he never wrote it but it's very passionate so if I would sing it with accents it sounds oh, 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 oh and then to note the, I'm shooting this video at 5 in the morning and <coughs> yeah <laughs> I need to farm up my voice <coughs> but you get the, the idea um, especially over here every note in the right hand is to know the end that really brings this you know waiting and request and painful intonation oh. And again, to know the change to accent. And make sure that even here you play with accents every single note, so it's so marcada. of the piece much better. Of course in the very beginning, in the very end, and then accent. Till the very very end. Can you imagine he wrote basically this one super fast semi quiver so so crazy it's like every one is marcata. and wait again I'm not using any pedal so far while imagining every note in the strings in the left hand and in the voice in the right hand okay. and keep your back straight don't forget I don't think I actually mentioned that recently in my tutorial videos but please because that will help you to play in the piano not down the piano <laughs> in the floor you know listening to harmonies of this piece it really I really could discover much deeper much more painful meaning of this piece when I would listen to this in the performer in the performance of other pianists uh, I wouldn't think it's so much painful as I find out when I was listening to the harmonies. Well, first of all, I don't know if that was accidentally or I really like that E flat minor or I like the piece of
that Rachmaninoff used to write in E flat minor, but <laughs> you see again this elegy in the same uh, key as uh, my previous tutorial about um, Rachmaninoff's etudes. <laughs> to express very deep, painful and yet very powerful and passionate music and image yeah so an emotion uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, let you guys join me in listening harmonies and maybe you will discover as well more meaning in this piece through the harmonies again we do this then to imagine every note in timbre in that color of harmony that will bring that will bring additional color to our fingertips, to our touching, and also that would enrich our intonation. So basically everything we do, everything we do is just to uh, improve the touch and the way we sing. Yeah, well, I just discovered that. <laughs> so, Actually, he by combining by, by by using dynamics and harmony here, he really could reach this emotion when you know it hurts so much that you simply stay stay silent. You know, so he using this harmony and he using this pianissimo here.
I want you guys to hear every harmony. And he come back to the pain again. piece of his music because it really it it's absolutely have everything you know it has a silent sad places it had this beautiful like dream it has this appassionate that just beyond everything that you just you know when your soul just leaves your body and just go up and yeah it actually contains every emotion that Rachmaninoff later would develop in every of his concertos, etudes. I think that's pretty much cool. <laughs> so we we'll continue. Now here again like very question intonation, you know, when when is gonna finish.
this is after this listening, you're trying to imagine every note in that timbre in that color of the harmony and playing with intonation and weight. So the next step when you um, literally mention every note in timbre, harmony and dynamics that is written in the score, make sure you imagine right hand really mezzo forte and left hand really piano or pianissimo. And especially all these parts, it's really pianissimo in the right hand. And with fortissimo you would really imagine huge sound. And the same here, pianissima in the accompaniment and mezzo forte with your voice in the middle part. So there is nothing, nothing much to say about dynamics, just make sure you mention it. But when we talk about voicing, uh, of course, even when this within this um, interval texture make sure you imagine top note closer and bass in the left hand I always imagine closer um, in this case you know your music would start being three-dimensional basically <laughs> because there will be notes that you imagine closer there will be notes on the background and it's very clear, you will reach the very clear sound. Over here I basically imagine the bass closer and the top note and the melody closer. Even if it's pianissima. playing with dynamics and balance it, and with dynamics and voicing that would be a sound this day. back to tempo one you really imagine everything pianissimo because that all makes all the difference here this one part the melody is not that support anymore it's very very soft Here. 
because um, sometimes people really don't notice that and continue playing something around, mezzo so piano, mezzo so forte right hand. So just don't miss it, it's very important. Then we start imagining every note in sound texture, basically in the texture of deep water. And this is what brings this kind of sensations in your finger that Rachmaninoff called growing fingers through the key. I mean, I don't know, I'm not Rachmaninoff, I don't really know what he meant, but it feels like that for me. <laughs> um, so basically you imagine in sound texture and then in harmony, in dynamics and voicing. And um, from this stage on, you start playing with pedal. And this is how it looks like. If I imagine all everything together, it will bring additional, again, fr freedom to my intonation, to my hands, to my body. is musical speech. Um, so we use musical speech to bring additional meaning to our melody and it's also necessary for our phrasing a little bit later. Just want to remind you that with musical speech we have we understand the meaning of each interval like second and seventh is request, waiting, question, Third and sixth are uh, romantic, beautiful harmony. Fourth is call to action, you know, uh, diminished fifth, augmented chorus means something tensed, some mystery, you know. Fifth is more released, more meditation, more contemplation here. Uh, octaves and unison are very confident and open statement, expression. And uh, just again, want to remind you guys, just by knowing this, you cannot express anything through playing. You really have to use intonation to express meaning of interval. <laughs> so everything you do through internal singing. Uh, otherwise it will be only in your head, it will never pass to the instrument, <laughs> to your performance. Actually, the musical speech here is incredible. If you just guys take time and just analyze it, maybe like 10 minutes, you will see so much meaning in this music. No mention here that everything goes by second three. Then over here, second, 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 and beautiful six.
over here. He goes on six and then on third up. Yeah. <laughs> and then both hands. This is like second down. And on the left hand, if you intonate from E to E flat, it's also like almost like second, like the same intonation. So in both hands, this you know, tensed, painful intonation, like second here and maybe seventh over there. Then third, then augmented and diminished chords. That's why it's so intense here. structure of this music about phrasing one of my favorite parts um, so we're gonna find the limit of motifs and we're gonna emphasize main intervals in the motifs and then we're gonna find the limits of phrases and emphasize motifs again when we do phrases with main motifs within those motifs we emphasize intervals <laughs> I hope you understand guys so motif with main intervals and phrase 
So when we play vibrates, we emphasize the wind motif with wind intervals. <laughs> yeah, this is like architecture here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just play by motifs with little break between them so you could understand where the limit is and emphasizing the main interval again how we emphasize we because we expressing phrasing through intonation and weight then when we have this intention to like bring everything to a certain interval then naturally we would bring more weight we will use more weight to that interval again naturally uh, so that's why um, you can actually again express because you know many teachers explain so detail sometimes the phrasing you know like this is the top of the phrase you know this is going down but again by understanding this on the understanding you cannot play it it's not enough you really need to uh, uh, connect it with your intonation you really need to express it through uh, singing while playing so basically uh, what I can say one motif is around two bars here so this one one motif and the main intervals here
can do like this. that consists of three motifs, so I would say less, first, less, second, like, or first less, second more, and third the most, so that means less, more, and more in the very last one, or like that could be uh, like here in the beginning, one phrase consists of three motifs and second motif would be more important, so I would say first less, second more, third less. Okay, so the very first one is just, you know, like this motif, like introduction. So everything starts from here. So first less, second, third less. And this is again like addition. I, I make it really separately. I didn't want to make it within the phrase. It's basically like echo or something not from the world. <laughs> so the next one. First less. Second less. Third less. First less. Second last. 
first last second <laughs> first last singing and this is one of the reasons why I'm of course I'm intonating while playing but also I'm um, making everything within the beautiful phrasing within the natural shape of phrasing and if you play this way guys it's much easier to grasp the whole piece distribute energy and uh, it's just so much pleasure to play with good phrasing, especially if you know how to express it. <laughs> my one of my favorite stage comes when we're trying to play with when we playing with emotional image, and basically this is absolutely like universe for me because I'm just imagining on everything that I feel through this music and I'm tuned into that and I'm expressing through every single interval and of course I'm imagining all the colors of all the notes that I have to imagine in my head and I'm following the phrasing but still trying to feel ex and express every vibration of this music through the playing and it could be as slow as this you know this is basically why we did everything before to be able to do this when I first discovered that, that I actually can express my emotions through this distance between notes you know <laughs> how to say when we play our true the true life of music exists between notes in this distance between notes and this is where you feel the vibrations of music so that's why when I'm playing here, the 
there is so much between this E flat and B flat going on. <laughs> so I think actually um, we could say that music doesn't exist in the sound, it exists between the sounds. <laughs> But usually when pianists play, we just think about, okay, sound, 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 but all the music, all the real life of music exists between notes. <laughs> so that's why if you really um, master, if you really a master of this technique with intonation, with musical speech, with phrasing, with imagining sounds, uh, you are free to express everything you want while playing, you know, there is no limit because you're basically living uh, in these intervals, you're living between notes, not in the notes. <laughs>
to music. <laughs> we have to bring this time to music. And I would pulsate every half of the bar and I would tune into the emotional image and I would really feel this pulsation as heartbeat of that image. <laughs> I hope you know what I mean. And every ritenuta I would also feel the slowing down of the heartbeat, you know. And Pio Viva, again, why Pio Viva, you know, it's like a dream, it's like a new fresh air that's I, again, while counting every half of the bar, I was just feel this more lively pulsation. Not just, you know, simply I'm playing faster. No way, I would feel this pulsation. And then when I'm coming back, I'm again slowing down. Um, so in this case, everything you want to express, your musical speech, your phrasing, your emotional image, your harmony, your form, you would have to express within the limit of the time feeling all the time this um, heartbeat of the music. <laughs> and again, when we play everything and express everything with artistry, uh, that helps us, first of all, to uh, play confidently in front of audience. And um, from my experience, basically here I can share with you, but when I started to play with artistry, then um, it actually changes my intonation. It changes the way I would sing, the way I would pronounce the sound. Uh, I think that would bring more, you know, like this male thing to my playing. <laughs> it became less like lyrics and romantic and became more steady and deeper and more serious. <laughs> But again, I didn't make it on purpose, it's just because I'm ex expressing everything through artistry. Uh, so, I would probably play a little bit. <laughs> so, and the very last step, what I would basically do, and what would every one of you would make, and the very last step after passing the whole piano system and after using it to analyze the song, you would tune into the image of music. You would feel it in the heartbeat, in this pulsation. You would give it a certain pulsation. That you would feel it in a certain part of form. For example, this is beginning. And then you would express everything through artistry and start playing with all the phrasing, with all this sound imagination that you did before. tutorial and uh, again everything that I showed you here guys you can achieve and understand fully only after you're passing like the piano training program uh, even though this program consists of very simple songs some very simple exercises and steps but it develops so much over here that I, I simply cannot do this with any difficult pieces but basically that program will develop everything you need to be able to do what I just done over here. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate every your thought, every your kind words, and uh, you really inspire me to move on. <laughs>